testing one two three testing now I'm doing this sermon because of um, universalism is, um, is is a topic that's basically being discussed you know because I have a, I have a video on, on the subject already up and um, I want to go ahead and point out what the Bible teaches on this subject and then I want to explain why universalism attacks doctrine and that's the name of the sermon by the way universalism attacks Bible doctrine so let me open up with prayer and then go ahead and explain why it does. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word and allowing us to understand what it says on this, this particular subject. Bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, what is universalism? Let's define what it is. Universalism is the idea that not only can, every, can everybody be saved, and I believe everybody, that I believe every human being alive, that, you know, had a, has a, you know let's, just, let's not worry about the people that are dead already, okay? They had a chance to be saved. Let's, let's, let's worry about the people that are alive. Every human being alive can be saved. See, John 3.16 applies to the whole world. Okay? I'm definitely not a Calvinist, and I'm not a Universalist. It applies to everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, Universalists teach that everybody will be saved, hands down. Everyone's going to heaven, according to them. Now, that is faulty. That, that, I, I, find, I find flaws in that. Number one, everyone can be saved, of course, but not everyone's going to be saved. The Bible records people that are in hell. Judas Iscariot, the, the, the Antichrist. You got the story about, you know, in Luke chapter 16, about the rich man and the beggar, and you got, you know, Abraham and Lazarus, Abraham's bosom, and the, they, that's a story about a person being in hell. Now, look, everyone can be saved, of course. But not everyone wants to be saved. I, I deal with people that do not want to be saved all the time. You, you try to tell me they're going to heaven against their own will? No, they're not. Because if a person doesn't want to be saved, they're not going to be. It, it's, it's, see, the Bible makes it clear. And, I'm, and So let's just go down and grab, let me grab my notes right now and explain to you the seven reasons or the seven things that the universalism attacks. Number one, universalism attacks evangelism. Why witness there if everyone's going to be saved in the end? Mark, 5, Mark 16, 15 says preach the gospel to every creature. What's the point of preaching it if everyone's going to be saved? No, the reason we preach it is because there are people that are not saved and we need to preach. We need to tell them how to be saved. You know? When you, you start giving the gospel to people and you will come across people that do not want it. And it's just the way it is. Now, it's not always that way. A lot of people do want to be saved. Or a lot of people are, al are already saved. And, you know, they're just happy to, to hear, they're happy that you gave them a, a gospel thing. Okay, number two, universalism attacks the idea that there, it attacks the whole point of salvation. What are we saved from? Okay, if no one goes to hell in the end. They, and then that some believe that, they, that people do go to hell, but they don't believe it's eternal. Well, see, that's not biblical. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation. How sh There's no escaping hell. And see, you, you can neglect it. People do neglect it. You know, you give people the gospel and they throw it in the trash. They ne they're neglecting salvation. They don't, they don't care about God. They don't want to be saved. It's their problem. Number three, what's the point of faith? If, if universalism is true, if everyone's going to be saved in the end, automatically, what's the point of faith? Jesus Christ said in Luke 7.50, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. So that it's, it's attacking faith. Okay, number four, where does the devil, the Antichrist, and Christ rejectors go? Revelation 20 says they're, 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 they're going to be in the lake of fire, and they're going to be in torment. And the torment's going to go on forever, day and night. So where does the devil go, if, if universalism's true? Is the devil going to be in heaven? And I know universalists that do believe the devil's going to be saved, and that's ridiculous. It's blasphemy. Now look, this is... Universalism is not based on the Bible. It's based on man-made tradition. It's based on man's wishful thinking. It's based on, oh, this is what we want to believe. It, it's all it is. It's kind of like a palliative. It's a palliative. Um, it's like an, an analgesic type, you know, assuaging cream or something to alleviate or help, you know, console or solace some pain, that, the pain that people have when they think about hell. And they, it's, that's all it is, a palliative. <clears throat> okay? Now, what's a palliative? What does that mean? What does that even mean? Well, here's what it means. It's like a medicine or something that, that helps to, like, nullify the pain. Now, let me see what the dictionary says it means. 
just to give you the exact definition. The dictionary reads, it's, a, it's soothing, okay, palliative, a soothing, it treats, it's something that treats uh, symptoms, it alleviates pain, it, and that's what, that's what universalism is. It's like a, it's a medicinal palliative, some type of a, you know, it takes the pain, away. it's a painkiller is what it is. They don't want to deal with hell. They don't like the fact that people burn in hell forever, so they make up stuff. They make up junk, and that's what they've made up, universalism. Oh, everyone's going to be saved in the end. Wrong. Okay, the devil's not going to be saved in the end. The Antichrist is not going to be saved. Those that reject Christ and never get saved, never believe on Jesus, they will not, they will not go to heaven. Okay, number five, it, it attacks the fact that there's only one way to heaven. There's only one way. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See, Jesus Christ was the only person, and when I say person, he was, he was both, you know, God and, you know, he was a human being in the sense that he had all the human traits, and he, uh, he, he understood our pain. He understood you know, what, we're, what we go through. But Jesus Christ was not a sinner. He never sinned. He's both man and God, you know, and he was without sin. So he's the only one that went to the cross who was even qualified to go. And he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and rose again. He paid our debt. He paid, you know, for our sins. We're washed in his blood. And I want to do another sermon on that next, about being redeemed by the blood. So Jesus Christ was the only one who could, who could give us eternal life and, and, and die for our sins. So therefore, he's the only way to heaven. Okay, I just, read, I just quoted the verse, John 16, 4 says he's the only way. Now, if universalism is true, you've got multiple ways to heaven. That means anybody, even a Muslim, can go to heaven through that garbage. You, even an atheist is going to heaven. Adolf Hitler is going to be in heaven. You know, anybody, a rejecter, a Satanist, you know, a Luciferian, you know, devil worshiper, someone that, someone that followed Aleister Crowley and, and, you know, Antoine LaVey and Charles Manson, and they're, they're devil worshippers, and they have Baphomets and pentagrams all over them, and they go out and perform, you know, cancellations up to Satan, and they perform immolations and all this demonic stuff, satanic rituals. Oh, well, they'll go to heaven too, according to universalists. No, they won't. You go to heaven if you get saved. The Bible says that hey, you, ha you must be saved. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Those, those are the only people going to heaven, are the saved people. What do you think saved means? Saved from hell. You're saved from your sins. That's what hell, you know, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, universalism attacks the one way to heaven. It, 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 according to them, it doesn't matter. You can believe anything and you'll be saved. It's garbage. It's a lie. It's, it's demonic. It's not biblical. Okay? It's wishful thinking. Yeah, I, I will admit, it, it does sound nice. Everyone's going to heaven. It's not true, though. Okay? It's just not biblical. I, I, I'd love for everyone to go to heaven. Why do you think I tell people how to go to heaven? Why do you think I gave the gospel out to a bunch of people tonight and got a bunch of them saved? Because I, I want people to go to heaven. But you know what? You've got to preach the gospel to them. They have to hear the gospel, you know, and then they believe the gospel, they're saved. They believe on Christ, they're saved. But see, universalism goes against all this. So number six, it makes Christ's death on the cross, believe it or not, meaningless. If everyone's going to be saved. Because now look at this. Now they say, now here's what they're going to say. No, it doesn't. It gives God more glory. It doesn't give God glory if people are, 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 are rejecting it. How is the person going to be saved you know, if they don't want to be saved. Now, the Bible talks about people that are, are, are going to perish. Now, God does not want anyone to perish. Good night. I don't, I don't want anyone to perish. And, I mean, I'm not downing some of these people that are universalists. They obviously don't want people to perish either. But the problem is they've done away with hell. In their own theor Theoretically, they've done away with hell instead of telling people how to not go there by being saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. That's the problem is they, instead of giving the gospel to people, the good news, the, go the gospel is good news, instead of presenting it to people, they've eradicated it so that, that they made, they've basically made the, you know, the gospel obsolete, as well as, you know, hell, and it's ridiculous. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Now, you have two types of people here. Those that are not saved, they think, the, they, they think the gospel is foolish, they think the cross is foolish, they think God is foolish, they think the Bible's foolish, they think salvation and everything about the Bible is foolish. They're perishing. The others that are saved, they understand that the, that the cross is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. And that's what the Bible teaches. So universalism makes the cross unnecessary. You know? It really does. 
you know. Now, it's about as bad as Calvinism. God forces, God just saves people against their will. See, the problem, the difference is, according to Calvinism, God saves who he wants and damns the rest. According to universalism, God just saves everybody. It's all garbage. Okay? God does save, completely. But it, but a person has to understand, you know, their need, and then come to Christ by faith to be saved. And some people don't do that. It's just the way it is. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. Now, so that's, so I think universalism is just like a, kind of a, a, a brother-in-law to Calvinism in, in that they just, it's all God picking and choosing and, and whatever. It's not, it's not how it works. Okay, number seven, it engenders total laziness and lassitude when it comes to witnessing, and it really would. I know somebody who's a universalist, and whenever you talk about soul winning and getting somebody saved around him, he just looks at you funny. Because he thinks that people are all are automatically going to be saved in the end. All, everybody's what he thinks. Now that's a lie. You know that is a lie. And that, the problem with it is, it you know we need to be telling people how to be saved instead of assuming that they're all, all automatically going to be saved. And that's just the way it is. You know there are people out there if you don't get the gospel to them, you know, and and explain it to them. And make it clear to them. And they, they may, they may, you know, later on in life say, "I don't care about that stuff." But that's why you get it to them early, you know. So I think universalism is a bunch of garbage. It's what I believe. It's what the Bible teaches. Now, why do we? Where do they come up with it? C can they back any? Can they? Can they back? Can they use a, a Bible, a Bible verse to prove universalism? Is there one verse that proves it? No, there, there really isn't. But see, here's the verse they twist. They like to go to this verse, First Timothy chapter one. Or actually, First Timothy chapter two, verse four. Who will have all men? Okay, the second, verse three. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Hey, God, will, God wants everyone to be saved, but sadly, not everyone does, not everyone gets saved. Not everybody wants to be saved, and you, yes, you do have to want it. If you knew, if Jesus made that clear, John four ten. If you knew of the gift of God that I give. You know, you would have asked, and I would have given thee living water. And I paraphrase that. But see, yeah, you have to desire it. That's the point. And then, you know, whosoever will, let him come. It's, it's, it's a choice. So universalism's garbage, and that's, it's just not so. You know, the people that, that, that reject Christ will not be getting out of hell. If they die and go, if they if they die lost, they will not get out of hell. Period. And I have verses to back that up, but I, I I'd have to like dig around for them. Anyway, it's all I have. Dear, let me just close in prayer. Dear God, I don't believe in universalism for one bit, for one second, because if universalism were true, then I'm wasting my time telling everyone how to be saved and going over the gospel with people. And your Bible tells me to do that. So I just believe people need to understand that you know evangelism is important, and that's the whole point of being a Christian, is to share this message with other with others. It's not to sit around and do nothing and just laze around hoping everyone and wishing everyone's going to go to heaven in the end. That's not what the Bible teaches. Just keep us safe and bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.